Okay, now we're getting to the nitty gritty of this building here. And we're getting into the details that are needed to be added to the walls before it is all put together. Now, I know that in a plastic model, what they tell you to do is the first step is to glue them all together, the second step is to paint them, the third step is to, well, hell, you've already got the model done. Why don't you just leave it on the table half done anyways? And I think that's what the problem is with plastic models. You know, they look done before they're actually done. In a craftsman kit, you know, you don't have to put the wall together. They actually suggest that you finish each wall completely before you put them all together. And in today's episode, we're going to add uh, windows and doors, some signs, some nail holes in the wall. At the end of this episode, we're going to hand paint a sign on the, end, on the side of this building. And you're going to see how easy it is to hand paint your own signs and even make your own templates to do this kind of stuff. You're watching Essentially Wood, a show about... Oh, come on. It's just a show about everything you need to know about building wood. Now, I've got to confess. I'm chomping at the bit to get this building together. I'm real proud of the way it's looking, so I can't wait to get it together. Except... I gotta be patient and do each step slowly and properly because if I leave something and do it sloppy, it's gonna be the thing that sticks out to me and it's gonna ruin the whole picture for me. So let's get at it, shall we? First step is to get our windows and doors painted. These windows and doors are laser cut on a kind of a task board that has two-sided tape on the back so it's sticky so what I did was I painted it a basic tan color from my camouflage spray paint uh, stash and allowed that to dry completely next for the main doors I'm using slate gray to to do a, a kind of a pseudo peeling paint technique. I don't want to go overboard with peeling paint. And I feel that you, if you want to go overboard with peeling paint, it should be on a prominent showpiece item. Something that people are going to look at. If it's going to be sitting inside the model somewhere, just do a simple peeling paint technique. Simulate it. Don't worry about adding salt and all this crazy stuff to every part of your layout. You find out or figure out what parts are most important and go to town on them. But the parts that aren't really going to be that important, don't make them all that important. We then move to the trim pieces and do the same thing, except this time we use white. There's a large sheet of windows and doors that I figured I was going to paint most of them all white anyways. So using a sponge, I put a, a general base texture onto the sheet and then came back with my brush to, you know, just clean up each of the windows and add a bit more paint because it wasn't looking the way I wanted it to. Now it's time to put our doors and windows together and just because a piece has a sticky back doesn't mean that that sticky back has to stick to something so don't worry about the backs of the doors it's gonna just dis distract you at the moment I wanted to have all my doors look like they were slightly ajar so I kind of put pulled my doors apart so that I could do that However, it must be noted that all your pieces, all the paint on your pieces has to be perfectly dry before you start this. Otherwise, you start ruining the two-sided tape on the back of your door pieces. 
Today's video is brought to you by Pelican Focus. Pelican Focus is the photo stacker that makes the most clear photographs that you could ever make. To get 20% off a lifetime license of Pelican Focus, go to modelersguild.com slash HF. And we thank Pelican Focus for their support of our show. So in the last episode, we talked about basic scratch building, board on cardboard construction, and I kind of mentioned something that I kind of wanted to reinforce in this video because it is kind of important. In this wall, you see that there are two windows and a door. Now, I could put my boards onto this wall, glue them on, and cut out those windows and doors and then weather it with a whole bunch of moisture. Enough moisture to, to flood Florida in the rainy season. But you know, I don't want to do that with small itty bitty boards that are gonna pop off singly. I wanna weather these boards when they're full length onto the cardboard and fully dry. And then after I'm, I'm done weathering those pieces, I want to weight down this wall so it's completely dry before I start cutting out these windows and doors. It's really important because, you, well it's not really important, it's actually a real pain in the butt if you don't do it this way because you're going to end up fixing little itty bitty boards that will fall out after you've added your alcohol. Now this means more than just your ink and alcohol stain. If you remember in video number two, we had wanted to do an East Coast look, so we used our Dr. Ben's aged driftwood stain to create that effect. But when we're adding our stain, we're painting this wood with an acrylic, and then we're mixing it with a lot more isopropyl alcohol that it already then it already has in it so this uh, this wall that has been just uh, glued to the cardboard is going to become saturated and I mean completely saturated and the reason that is is because alcohol will soften your white glue now this may be a technique that you use to your benefit in the future but right now, it is not to your benefit. After a few hours, when the, I've allowed the stains to dry, and the cardboard on the back is also dry, I cut the windows and doors out from the rear with a heavy duty razor blade. I don't bother with a number 11 blades. They're kinda too wimpy for this guy. And another thing I'm, I'm hoping that you're noticing is that I've braced my walls. With all the moisture that we're adding to these walls, they are inevitably going to curl up again with the, or against the grain. And if we want to keep a perfectly straight structure and have it all look perfectly square and nice in the end, you should brace it. However, as a rule, I rarely ever brace in the corners itself. I like to brace closer to the middle so that the corners are free for when I put the building together. Now I know I mentioned nail holes. I'm just going to show you the tool I use. I use sewing needles and just rigged it up to a little piece of wood with some crazy glue. Pretty crazy idea, huh? Make your own tools. It'll make you feel good about the work you do. After the break, we're going to address how our walls aren't uniform in color. And I have to get these walls looking the same color before I can consider putting them all together. I have been sharing my scale modeling experiences on YouTube free of charge for over two years now. In that time, I've invested a lot of time and money into this project. Projects like these need funding to grow, and I'm asking for your help. Patreon.com slash Ron Perry. I like to keep things simple. 
So, what we've done is we colored our wood red with the stain originally. Then we treated each wall once with the same product, Dr. Ben's aged, aged driftwood. And then we added one or two coats of our India ink stain. But that meant one wall was a lighter than all the others. So how are we going to get our walls to match? We don't want to change the color. We just want to change the tone. And if we're looking to change our tone darker, one more coat of India ink stain is going to work fine. Okay, we're working on the home stretch here. I promised a hand painted sign, so now I'm going to deliver. In the kit, you'll find a template that's laser cut out of a piece of paper or heavy paper. And what you're supposed to do with that is use that as a guide to paint your wall. Now, I've done this before and really messed it up by adding too much paint. And also, I messed it up by using a sponge. Because a sponge may look like it's got most of the paint out, but when you push it into the board, it'll still push some paint out, and that usually, in my experience, bleeds underneath your template, totally ruining the whole effect. Now, I also wanted to name this building Keller Shipyard for my buddy Marty, so I cut out my own template on my Cricut die cutter. So as you can see, we clamp down the main template onto the wood and now I'm using a real nice wedge style brush and dry brushing paint on. I'm putting paint onto the brush and then removing 90% of that paint so that I can control where it hits the wood and how far it spreads onto the wood because we really want to have this be a faded sign that's been weathered over time. Secondly, don't try to do this while holding this, the template on with your fingers or using some kind of spray substance to stick this to the wood. Don't try that either. Use a couple of clamps and attach it the way I have it. Now, the, the reason why this works is because we're dry brushing. We're being very delicate with our brush while we're painting onto the wood. So all we need to do is have our clamps snugly keep our template in, in a secure position. With the template off, you can now see all the little spots where the template blocked you from completely painting the letters in. For instance, the R isn't connected, and the Y isn't connected, and the A doesn't have a little line in the middle. So go back with a nice, sharp wedge brush like before, and just finish the painting by hand without the template. Fill in those letters so that you can see them better. So we've reached the end of another video. Another video's in the can, as they say. Next video, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I know I wanna put the walls all together, but there's probably a few steps that I need to do before I do so. So we'll see what happens in the next video. And hey, if you want to contribute to the show, you know how to do it. The information's coming up at the end of the show. Also, if you've got something you'd like to see in the shows, maybe comment down below. Press the like button. Share it on Facebook. Share it in the forums.
Just don't let anybody talk some crap about it. I don't know. It's not good for the hobby.